Okay, so um, a couple months before my father passed away, he gave me his coin collection. And this was back in, I think, May, late May. And, you know, at the time I was like, okay, um, you know, I'll take it, I'll do some research, and then I'll just sell it because I really didn't care about coins. I kind of knew he was into it a little bit, but never really talked too much about it. Um, and, uh, you know, as part of that process, uh, I started, you know, liking the coin collection and as a result decided to not sell anything and on top of that I wanted to add to it or at least you know create my own portion um, you know of it and so uh, my goal was to target sovereign coins initially and then anything else I, I kind of liked like some of the 90% stuff and some odds and ends so I'm gonna kind of go through and uh, I've been doing this for now like almost four months is and here are the results of that so I'm going to go through these in a little bit and uh, see where we are and talk about, you know, plans going forward. And I will be right back. All right. See all those tubes lined up. I got, um, I guess, I mean, my strategy was targeting sovereign coins. And so what I have so far, um, so I have some maple leaves. And what I did was I got a roll of current year. Um, well, 20. I think a tube of Canadian maple leaves is like 25 if you do it that way. But I have 20 of 2024 maple leaves, and then I got a roll of 20 here of backdated maple leaves, I think. Yeah, these are like, what's this, 2014. And so these are the maple leaf uh, tubes. Now, uh, these, are, these tubes uh, are from a, a company called On Fire Guy. And he sells the tube with like uh, like twenty of the uh, snap tight or the direct fit holders, and you got to be careful because sometimes you know if you get you know initially I was getting all the plunger type, which is this type here, but when it came to the maple leaves, you can only fit nineteen of them in here because this thing would get in the way up top, right? So I had to switch over to these cap type, which which is fine because if you look in here. You know, 20 maple leaves, you could see there's no way that plunger is going to fit on top of this tube anymore. So I think maybe cap type is probably the way to go for everything um, just to make sure you don't get stuck. And I uh, I did that with another one of the Sovereign Coins here. In fact, I did it with these. I was worried these might not fit in a uh, plunger type tube, and I was correct. So I'm glad I went and ordered this from the outset. These are Britannia's. And for these, I had to go with these ring type holders because apparently they're an odd size and there was no direct fit option without the ring inside there, the black ring. So I got uh, 20 of these and I think they're mixed dates, I forget, but 20 of them nonetheless. So two tubes of Canadian maple leaves, one tube of Britannia's, uh, got a couple tubes of American Eagles, 2024. I see plenty of room there for the plunger. Um, I think I might have made the mistake of buying the Mint Direct Tube, which came with a little bit of a premium, and I didn't really need that, I don't think. Um, but that's what these are, 2024. And then also a tube of backdated eagles, one of which I cleaned. This actually did come from my father, this, this one right here. Um, so not all of these were... Or ones that I, that's the one that he actually had already and I put in here and I added 19 more to make a total of 20. And then there's this eagle, which I just showed. This is the um, 2024 um, Star Privy mark here. And um, yeah, I grabbed this just because I wanted to close out his collection of eagles because he has a run from, I think, 86 to... To now, um, I know he had like a 2024 in there, like a basic one, but I wanted to get this one because this is some significance, right? In doing this, I guess I learned that half a million uh, print run or print run, uh, half a million minted coins is low in the coin space, from what I understand, which I think is pretty crazy, but that's a lot of coins still. Um, anyway, got this one graded 70, this eight era, whatever that means. This came from SD Bullion, nice coin. So there's that. So. That's the Eagles. And then uh, what else we got going on here? We talked about this, this. Uh, what do we got going on here? We have, oh, Morgan Dollars. I like the Morgan Dollars. Uh, these were supposedly brilliant uncirculated. Maybe they're like more like AU, almost uncirculated. 
None of them are from 1921. They're all prior to that. This one has some toning on it. Um, but I don't think there's any like big dates in here because this was not that expensive. Um, this is 1886, 1881. Then I got a roll of Morgans. And I do want to get a roll of Peace Dollars just sort of like to finish that out and have that little set too um, eventually. Uh, what else we got here? We have in here, oh, Silver Britannias. Um, and I don't know, this is, that's Charles. Do I, are these all 20? They're going to all be 2024s, uh, these Britannias. So as far as sovereign coins go, I'm just missing um, like a tube of of kangaroos, um, libertads, and then also krugerrands. I think those are the three big ones that I'm um, that I don't quite have yet. So speaking of kangaroos, these are the I do have four of them because they came with this little this neat little starter kit. One of the first things I picked up. Rusty Billion, um, they came with four of each coin. Now, I know the gloves, whatever the gloves, I'm not worried about the gloves. Um, so here's the kangaroo coins, and these, I don't know what year these are, obviously not this year. Um, so what I want to do with these is get 16 more of them and then fill up another tube, and that's the goal there. So there's the kangaroos. And then I have this random one here. This early on in my stacking journey, I bought this off the Canadian Mint website of all places. I should have just waited and got a SD bullion. I didn't know what I was doing. In fact, you know, this is a privy at the time. I'm like, what the hell is a privy? It's a little mark. This one has a polar bear on it. And uh, so there's this one. And I guess I just leave it alone. Um, and this thing, as a matter of fact, I have, I do actually have five more of these on order, but they're in a, like, a, they're not graded. They're like in an app max sort of thing that looks like this. I don't know if that makes sense at all. Um, but it's in like a, an S, S, essay or something. Um, anyway, so that is the extent, I believe. Oh, no, I do have some more. Well, I'll wait, I'll wait for the end for this. For the, for the most of my sovereign coins. And then I have a lot of 90% stuff. Well, I guess it's all relative, a lot. Uh, I have some 90% silver that I, I like quite a bit. So a lot of half dollars. I got these. Our Washington halves. And these were part of a face um, dollar, like um, modern silver uh, per face dollar kind of thing. I don't understand what I'm trying to say, but um, I got like $30 worth and it included like 15 of these guys. I think 15 or maybe 19, I don't know. But there's, they have them in these two. So I got these. Um, and there was one loose one that um came with that purchase so i got that and then i got um uh, also part of that purchase was like a roll of these these are state quarters these are proofs also and i got actually i end up with three of these um state quarters proofs uh, one of my target items is like a just a standard roll of 19, like 64 or earlier. Washington quarters, brilliant and circulated, ideally. You like them shiny. Probably washed, but who knows. Um, so there's those quarters. And then I have some dimes also. Um, I got these mercury dimes, which were advertised as brilliant and circulated. Two of these, 50. And then I got these. These are proof dimes, you know, broken out of proof sets from like, like 2000, 2019 or something. And I was like, why don't these fit in this dime holder? You know, like if there's a piece of tape that has to keep this cap contained, you know, unlike this one. And I was talking to Tim Marchner at the New Hampshire Coin and Stamp Shop. And I said, yeah, I need a coin tube for my dimes. They don't fit. He's like, and they're proof dimes. He's like, oh, because they rest on the edges or something like that. So these will sit a little higher, even though that's the same quantity. So I'm kind of stuck with having to do this little cob job with the tape to keep this cap closed but anyway a roll of uh proof dimes a roll of mercury's and then maybe a roll of kennedy dimes or i'm sorry roosevelt dimes uh just to to fill that out um what else we got going on here a lot of half dollars um some kennedy proofs so and there's one like is that the washington one back there yeah there so there's the one random washington half that came without a capsule 
Um, and so what I did was I filled this up with 19 more Kennedy halves. And um, these are proofs. This one's from 2008. I think one of these was like a, a 2001, 2000, 2009 run or something like that. So anyway, I wanted to fill out another tube of 20. And here these are. Um, and then I have some also in here. One of these actually belonged to my father. So these aren't part of my stack. This was my father's coins, and I just put them in these things just to make them nicer. And these are 64 Kennedy halves. And these belong to him, so I did not, I did not purchase these. Um, but these I did. And here I think one of these is going to be another proof roll. Yeah, like here. Really nice. Shiny. Part of that modern silver, you know, face dollar deal. Then also I bought some of these... Um, on eBay or one of the online dealers. I forget now. So I got 20 in here and then I've got 20 of the Franklin halves. Really nice. So a lot of half dollars here. Um, and then I got some of the sort of the junkier style silver, I guess it's not really junk. It's still 90%. It's, um, $10 face of Franklin Kennedy and then the Walking Liberty. So these are a little bit beat up, as you'd expect. Um, so there's that one. And then here's some more Kennedys, a lot of Kennedys. This is 1964. So these. And then these are the Franklins. My father has a complete set of Franklin halves in a coin book. I think I'll just leave those alone. Um, so there's those. And then as far as, I think I covered everything here, right? Uh, these, these are some extra ones. I think these were his. I just put them in these little, because these are 64s, right? So I put them in here because I had extra ones of these. And then I have, let's see, I've got this little bag here from SD Bullion. And in here, oh, some more Sovereign coins. Oh, and some recent pickups. One of them recent pickup anyway. So, yeah, these are new. Um, I just, uh. Got these uh, Morgans, a set of three. You got the uncirculated, the proof, and the reverse proof Morgan dollar from 2023. Taken from a U.S. mint set, I presume. No box or anything. I don't really care about that, but those are nice. And then I have these Chinese pandas, which are kind of pricey. I think they're like 40 bucks. Well, when I got them, they're like $40. Got three of those. Chinese pandas in there from this year or last year? Uh, this year, 2024. Um, and then I have these sort of oddball. These are 1.5 ounces. These are Solomon Islands, um, Lady Liberty from 2017. So 1.5 ounces each. And they have the ring holder as well. So that's it. That's my silver stack. That's, that's four months of stacking silver right here. And uh, <laughs> actually, I prefer to, I'm more or less collecting this stuff. And I don't know how much longer it'll go. I mean, I, you know, maybe I'll, I'll hang in there and maybe grab a tube of eagles every year or something like that. But I'm not gonna, I'm not into the graded coins. I mean, except for that one that I got, um, you know, this one, I'm not into interested in graded coins. Uh, I just like the raw stuff, um, the ungraded stuff. And um, I really have taken an interest in the 90% uh, silver lately. But um, anyhow, I guess that will wrap it up. Four months into this whole thing, here's where I'm at. And um, more to come.